Mr. Speaker. Uh, the Honourable Nanaia Mahuda. Ka hono aku whakaaro ki te runga rawa me te karaki e whakaritea i a tātou i tēnei rangi. Tēnei anō i mihi atu ki a koutou ngā rua hine, ki matua te tapu, te maunga taranaki ki a koutou, kua tau mai nei i tēnei wā tēnā koutou. Kia koe e pō he he koutou ko tēnei te tutuki tanga mō ā rau kuku. Engari e tukana me kōrero tātou ki tēnei take. Wai hōtia mō te pānui tua toru, te whakawhānui ake i ngā whakaaro mā koutou. Engari, e pāna ki tēnei te momo o ngā kaupapa i puta mai i mui te aroro o te kōmiti Māori. Kā tika, ka whakamārama pai kia wai hō ki kōnei, ka mutu te wahanga o te tutukitanga ki te pānui tua toru. Mr. Speaker, I just want to offer some comments with regards to the substantive issues considered by the Māori Affairs Select Committee and raised uh, through the submission process. This is a second reading, so it's important for us to ensure that all the matters that, that were considered and traversed by the committee are clarified here so that by the time we get to the third reading and the substantive matters of the Narua Hine settlement, we're able to move forward confidently and in a way that gives Ngārua Hine a level of assurance that it is, is an opportunity for the iwi to move forward. Kei whea te rungoa mō tēnei tu āhuatanga, te muru raupatu, te raupatu i pā mai i runga i a koutou i a mātou. A te tangohia o a tātou nei whenua, nā te ture i mahia, nā te pakanga i mahia. Taua tu āhua tanga hei patui a tātou whakapapa, a kua puta mai aua kōrero katoa. So it's a very difficult, I guess, situation in terms of trying to traverse some of the historical realities of what happened and reconciling uh, some of those uh, through a treaty settlement process. My colleagues before me have spoken at length on that. But can I say, at the select committee level, when submitters came to the committee, albeit with some specific issues of contention with where interests were best uh, represented, ultimately the committee didn't get a strong sense that this was about a con contest between iwi or between hapu. Actually, this was a frustration uh, with regards to the Crown process. So I acknowledge that in the first instance. In the second instance, and I happened to be uh, the local MP when the Ngā uh, Ngāti Ruanui settlement uh, was reached. And um, let me, just for, for the purposes of, of those listening to this debate, uh, consider the Aro Kuku matter within that context. Uh, members of the committee had heard that the Ngāti Ruanui settlement had substantially addressed Aro Kuku interests. They had been recognised uh, in terms of having a, a seat on the governance board, uh, and they were included in the claimant definition. However, the matter that came to the select committee under the Ngārua Hine settlement was that the Y552 claim was not extinguished. So your common sense approach would say, well, if Aru, Aru Kuku's interests were settled under the, the, the Ruanui settlement, why wasn't the Waitangi Tribunal claim extinguished at that point, if the Crown was so confident? We pursued all those types of questions to try and understand the submissions coming to us under the Ngā, uh, Ngārua Hine settlement. With that said, I think in my mind what it whittled down was that there were some interests that may have been thought to be outside of the Ruanui settlement that may have been addressed in the Ngārua Hine settlement. And even if I whittle it down further, the matter really uh, could be condensed down to the, uh, the station, uh, the power station, which is why the select committee made comment of it. And Minister, uh, the matter that uh, the way in which you referred uh, to the Stratford Power Station land and its inability to be uh, utilised uh, for settlement purposes, but recognising that there is an issue that remains outstanding, I think is helpful uh, as people try to ensure that the nature and extent of their interest to specific areas that haven't been addressed by either settlements can still be recognised. And that's really important because uh, 
Aro Kuku did say quite clearly that um, the extinguishment of their Y claim within the context of the Ruanui settlement was something that they didn't consent to. However, this committee didn't change. The committee didn't change that. They didn't take that out. They, they've recognised that it will, this bill will continue uh, with the Y claim, Y552, and the recognition uh, that it will be extinguished. So another, uh, a, a, a couple of other matters which the committee concerned itself with as a result of the Aro Kuku submission. Uh, and that was mainly that the, in clause 13 of the bill, there was no specific reference to Aro Kuku, and uh, the issue was around the Whakapapa connection. Now, it's a really difficult situation on our select committee. We're not there to arbitrate over whakapapa. We would much rather prefer that those matters are well sought, uh, dealt with before it comes to our committee. However, we understand these are matters that are so inextricably linked to your connection to the whenua, they will undoubtedly come to the committee. So when we were informed that Aro Kuku's connection uh, to Ngārua Hine was through Kanehi and Umutahi, and Ōkahu and Unuwai Hapu, uh, we could only but accept that that was the case. Even though we heard that the uh, Kete Marae Pa was outside of the interests affected by the Narua Hine settlement, we understood that to the extent of the Narua Hine settlement, there was an opportunity for Aro Kuku interests to connect back here. Imperfect as it is for Aro Kuku, uh, and we tried very hard. You'll see in much of the committee's report, we tried very hard to try and whittle through every issue that was raised. Imperfect as these expl explanations may be for Aro Kuku, the committee resolved that actually it's, um, there was very little that we could do other than recognise the extent of their representation uh, to our committee and the importance of ensuring that for the public record there potentially may remain matters unresolved, but the relationships with Ngāti Ruanui and Ngārua Hene for the time being are absolutely critical and enable for, to enable Aro Kuku to move forward and also to enable Ngārua Hene and Ngāti Ruanui to continue to move forward. And can I just reiterate to the House so that there's no misunderstanding, there wasn't a high level of animosity between Ngārua Hine and Aro Kuku. There wasn't. There was a, there, a, there was, it was a very much a frustration with the process. Minister, you've heard all the contributions on, uh, from the committee at this uh, second reading of the speech. Can I uh, just, uh, um, for your benefit, uh, uh, acknowledge uh, the extent to which the officials went to the degree of giving us the advice that we needed to make a, a, a confident decision in the report that we're providing here today. Uh, can I thank my colleague, actually, uh, Adrian Ludofi, for sitting on this committee, as was uh, mentioned by our chair, Nat Korako. Uh, he offered sage advice to us and uh, a level of wisdom that, um, that was helpful to the committee. Um, so, no reira, uh, tēnei e tino mihi atu ki a koe, uh, Adrian, mō tērā, tō mahi uh, ki, ki te rohe uh, o te tai hauauru. Lastly, in terms of the technical amendments and the uh, transfer of responsibilities for the post-government uh, settlement uh, entity and, the, um, uh, and just making sure that no liabilities will uh, transfer, we saw that as a very worthy amendment and we're happy to recommend it to the House on the third reading. Ka waiho te te whakawhanui ake o ngā painga katoa mō te tutukitanga o, o ngā rua hine ki taua wā, engari mō tēnei wā ake, anei he pito, he pito pito kōrero, he paku whakamārama mō ngā āhuatanga i tai mai i mui te ara rō te kōmiti kanui te mihi atu ki a koutou ki a tātou katoa tēnā kui.